Welcome back to the news today. North Korea did uh, today may be something that the entire world is worried about, and we are here to discuss this. With me here in the studio is Dani Ayalon, former Israeli Deputy Foreign Minister. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. Thank you very much for coming. And also Dr. Emily Landau, head of the Arms Control and Regional Security Program at the INSS. Good evening. Hi, good evening. So, Dr. Landau, let's start with you. What we saw today is very worrying. You know, the United States was so occupied in the last few years with the Iran nuclear deal. We saw this year the agreement that everybody was so happy that it was signed. But somebody forgot the, let's say, bad boy that is standing in North Korea doing right. whatever he wants and nobody is actually paying any attention to him except the fact that there was some kind of a Hollywood film that um, made yeah. <laughs> some troubles. Yeah. It is a big deal. Maybe we can see today that it's even bigger than Iran. It is a big deal. Um, I mean, this test is the fourth nuclear test that North Korea has carried out. So uh, there's a question now whether it really was a hydrogen bomb or some kind of uh, boosted up regular atomic bomb. Um, but in any case, it's the, it's the fourth nuclear test. So we know that Iran is a nuclear weapon state. And with this test, North Korea is trying to remind everyone that it is there and it does have demands. Most of its demands, by the way, are directed to the United States. Um, it would like to sit down and negotiate nuclear issues with the United States, but nuclear state to nuclear state. You want us to disarm? We want you to disarm and stop threatening us. And so North Korea is trying to put itself sort of on equal standing with the United States. The United States, of course, will have none of that. But uh, the situation is not moving, in, you know, anywhere near a positive direction. And yes, it's much uh, better to focus on Iran, where you think you have a deal, than on the nuclear weapon state that you have no idea what to do with. So everybody knows what a nuclear weapon is. What is a hydrogen bomb? A hydrogen bomb, basically, the 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 uh, atomic explosion. Um, is the result of fusion rather than fission. So if you have the regular atomic bombs that are either plutonium-based or uh, high-enriched uranium-based, um, that's a, a chain reaction that's, that's fission. The hydrogen bomb is a different it, uh, uh, reaction, uh, fusion. And the main difference is it's just a much more powerful explosion. But again, if you're talking atomic bombs, you know, they're killing hundreds of thousands of people in any case if they were to be used. And so, you know, we're talking about orders of magnitude that are so uh, great that it's not really... Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, just yesterday we saw Barack Obama uh, shedding a tear about the gun control in the United States. Barack Obama <laughs> is... Uh, so you're thinking gun control, <laughs> atomic bombs? Yeah, you know, and, and, and Barack Obama is maybe the master of red lines. Barack Obama always spoke about reducing arms all around the world and weapons all around the world. And we're seeing that Barack Obama is not maybe, let's say, doing the best job in reducing nuclear weapon right. and reducing what is happening in North Korea and even in reducing gun control in his own country. Well, that's a good comparison, uh, Lucy, the gun control in the United States and uh, nuclear control or <laughs> nuclear uh, proliferation control. And in fact, I think this is the main problem that we see, that Obama is so much preoccupied with domestic issues that he's actually letting the uh, international arena uh, open to all the thugs and uh, we saw no red lines in Iran, we s in uh, Syria, Iran, the Crimea, East, yeah. the Middle East, Crimea. you name it. Okay. And I think what we see now is how he has pretty much now becoming the underdog also, the United States, in Asia. And I would like to, to introduce to, to this debate also the political aspect uh, of, of China. Because uh, despite denials, both in Pyongyang and uh, Beijing, I cannot believe that it was not done with a uh, um, blinking an eye or, or, uh, or although, at least... Although China condemned today... Of the course. Oh. But this, for China, it has two major assets. One, it increases its value 
and influence vis-a-vis -vis the United States, right? Because China is the one who should control North Korea. And secondly, it is pushing back the United States and the, the, um, the trade, the, the PPT, the Pacific uh, Pact trade that the United States signed with major Pacific powers just a few months ago, which was seen also as a way to curb the Chinese influence and the Chinese expansion. So here again, I think there is lack of leadership, lack of determination, and basically at the end of the day, uh, no um, um, deterrence that the U.S. can exert over anyone. You know, I'm thinking to myself, what are the chances that North Korea today is uh, we spoke about the fact that North Korea is isolated. Of course, the world will impose some sanctions after this uh, test. What are the chances that um, this tense test was um, being uh, some kind of a signal to the West world, to the Western world, to the Western uh, powers to tell them, here, we have the capabilities. We have problems with sanctions. We need a deal like you did with Iran. Well, I think what we've seen in the past with North Korea is every deal that was made with North Korea was after some kind of crisis that North Korea created. Um, and then it would suffer sanctions for whatever it did, whether a nuclear test or some ballistic missile uh, test. Um, and then after sanctions were put on, North Korea would come back to negotiations, and then it would be given economic assistance. So there's some kind of disconnect there. Either you're sanctioning or you're giving North Korea economic assistance. It seems that part of the strategy in the nuclear realm, at least for Kim Jong-il, I'm not sure anybody really understands the strategy of his son, who's been in power now for several years, but the strategy then was almost as a bargaining chip in order to, you know, get back to negotiations with the United States in, or the six-party talks and to get economic assistance. So they've used that strategy. What the Sun now is doing, Kim Jong-un, um, what his strategy is vis-a-vis -vis this nuclear test, we'll have to see. It's not clear. What is clear is that the international community has no good idea about how to deal with North Korea. There's no policy out there. There's basically nothing. Uh, the, the U.S. policy right so now is not even is to new. recognize Emily, North Korea what, as a nuclear what weapon else state. Is new? Does the international well, community have any clear idea what about is, the Middle East, what is new? about Crimea, about China? Be about very specific, does, it, does the United States have any clue in the... Uh, Unfortunately not, and Lucy, I see it as another, the, uh, this hydrogen, if indeed it was a successful one, and I think we'll take a few days to know... It's not clear it was hydrogen, right. but we have to wait And it's not clear whether it was fully test. successful yet, but I see it as another nail in the coffin of the end of the NPT, the end of the non-proliferation uh, treaty, just like the Iranian deal is. And in a way, we have seen it also historically that the NPT was never successful in, in, in stopping any proliferation. In the case of Saddam Hussein in 1981, Iraq was a, a signatory, he is a signatory of the NPT, yet he had the OS Iraq. Uh, Assad is, uh, or Syria, is a member of the NPT, and yet they had the Deir Azur, they had a, a yes. reactor there that nobody knew about. So we know that this is really, I mean, there's no confidence in it right now. And adding to that, that there is no really world order or any, um, today, any policy from the United States, we see Iran, we see, uh, by the way, North Korea, the, the uh, Iranian deal, the Vienna deal, was pretty much in, in the wake or designed along the lines of the North Korea deal, the Kedo deal in uh, 1994 which I know was defunct as the North Korean, you know, did develop the bombs in spite of it. So this is a very, very bad news today, and um, I'm afraid it's, we're going downhill but, from there. But, but it should be some kind of, I don't want to say a wake-up call, but it drives home the uh, point that once a state crosses that line, the nuclear threshold, there's really not much you can do to reverse course. Before a state gets there, there is stuff to do. 
Um, and so it should be some kind of wake-up call, again, for Iran. Um, the Iran nuclear crisis is not over. This deal that was announced in July will not take care of the problem. Iran is continuing to challenge the international community. And if the international community doesn't respond with determination, in 10 to 15 years, we might be sitting here, Lucy, and we're talking about the Iranian nuclear tests that we have nothing to do about. You're, you're telling me in 10 to 15 years, I, I, we will be sitting here. From what I'm hearing, in 10 to 15 years, we might not. <laughs> well, well that's, that's the other option. Yeah, the, the other option. Let's Thank be more you. optimistic about that. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for this. Thank you. The remnants of uh, the of uh, 300 and uh, 3,400 year old citadel was recently uncovered in the northern Israeli city of Naharia, which was once served the needs of sailors, uh, sailors. I'm sorry, who uh, frequented an an agent port. Numerous uh, artifact artifacts uh, were discovered, including ceramic. Uh, f um, figurings, uh, bronze, weapons, and imported pottery. According to Israel Antiquities Authority, their remains will preserve by incorporating them into a new residential high-rise. And with me right now in the studio... Da -da -dun -da -dun. Jonathan Ryan! Yay! <laughs> People will think we rehearsed this, and it's, it's, they will not believe this is spontaneous... You know that craziness. People, you know that people like in the control room. Some are jealous. Yes. And some are joking on us, and some are already trying to predict what will be today, what will happen today. The thing is, I don't even know a second before what will be today. Yeah, I can't predict what I will do today. Going with the flow. Yes, flowing. Chin. Going with the flow. Yes. Let's go to FIFA. <laughs> yes, <laughs> where nothing goes with the flow. If you think that um, uh, banning um, Sepp Blatter, Michel Platini, that, that would be an end case, then not at all. The second strongest man in FIFA after uh, Sepp Blatter is Jerome Valk, and he's the secretary general, former secretary general, we should say, because he's banned. And the FIFA Ethics Committee is now asking for him to be banned for nine years nine years for any competition, any involvement in world football, more than Platini, more than Blatter. And we should say that whatever Blatter has been involved with, we can assume, again, we have no proof, but we can assume that Jerome Valk was also in the business. He has been, he, he was the man handling everything. Uh, he, broadcast rights, tickets, uh, sales, you name it. A lot of money went through his hands. What did he do with it? I do not know, I can just assume. Assume. We can assume. Allegedly, I love that Allegedly, word. we can assume, we can think, and maybe we will be wrong. Yes, yes, but uh, I, I can't blame the guy before if, if I don't know. I do know that the FIFA Ethics Committee is, is asking for him to be banned for nine years. What does that mean? They know something. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, Spanish, Spanish Cup. Spanish Cup, Copa del Rey, that's what it's called. Copa del Rey. The, king, the King's Cup, if we translate it to English, but it never sounds good enough in, in no, another language. Spanish Cup. Spanish Cup. Uh, Real Madrid are out. It would have been very interesting to see Zinedine Zidane in his first match as, as manager. We'll wait for Saturday for that. Two interesting derbies today. One, Atletico Madrid against Rayo Vallecano, a, a small Madrid derby. But the more interesting game, the one in Barcelona. Barcelona against Espanyol. You would think a very easy clash for Barcelona. It wasn't so easy on, on, on the weekend when these two teams met in the league. Espanyol hosted that match, and it, w it was a goalless uh, draw. Third draw for Barcelona in four league matches, so they're not at their best, as it seems. Mm -hmm. Now this game is at the Camp Nou. Barcelona are hosting it. It will be interesting to see what they do now. Uh, two, uh, two players will be joining the squad because their ban, their, 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 um, their transfer ban has, has finished. So um, Arda Turan and uh, Vidal, they can play with their squad. This is the first match. Espanyol will host the next leg next week. Just uh, to know how Zinedine Zidane uh, will, um, will do on, in the next game, it will be interesting to see. Yes, very interesting. And it's on Saturday at home at the Santiago Bernabeu. They, they should have qualified to the next stage, but they, they, they were kicked out on technicalities because the, uh, a suspended player played in their match against Cadiz. They won that match 3-1, but they were kicked out because of uh, this, this irregularity. Uh, nothing to blame uh, former manager Rafa Benitez for, but if we want to see Zidane on the sidelines, we'll have to wait for Saturday. Okay, uh, so uh, before we're finishing, you brought me uh, some uh, semi flying Yes, yes, I can see the disappointment in your eyes, Lucy. I see your eyes disappointed. Mm -hmm. Not everyday people fly, apparently. 
too bad. I can't understand why. But people did not fly in the past 24 hours. <laughs> fly not in airplanes, I mean. <laughs> but, but they did go out skiing in Italy, in Santa Catarina, uh, slaloming. And uh, I don't understand how they have knees after they do that. I mean, chuck, 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 and, and chuck, 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 chuck. And, and this is relatively <laughs> easy, but uh, there is, it's, it's beautiful. And if we complained about the lack of snow, that's over, as it seems, where the temperatures are down, it's been snowing, and people are slaloming. If they're touching, like, the thingies that are stuck in the ice, it means that they're doing good? Uh, yes, they, they want to do the shortest route possible, and if you are uh, they have to go past it, but if, if they touch it, that means they're as close as you can be and the route is short. Okay. Let's remember these, these things are decided by tens of seconds and they're telling me, telling you, tell the guy to shut up and go. Yeah, yeah I need it just to understand. <laughs> so I'm sorry for trying to understand. Uh, Jonathan Regev, chick chuck. Chick chuck. Chick chuck. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Yes, and that's it. You can't blame a girl for trying to understand what the thingies in the snow are. That's it for tonight. Tomorrow we'll be here again at the same time, same place from the Jeff Port, Israel. Half East. Have a great night.